Hello and welcome to this video on Zener diodes. We've previously looked at the general diode in a previous video and it's probably worth going to look at that video first before checking out this one but in this video we're very briefly going to discuss the differences between general diodes and Zener diodes. Here in this diagram I've got a image of a circuit which has a variable DC voltage supply and a resistor and a Zener diode and the Zener diode in this particular circuit is forward biased and so current is going to be allowed to flow in this particular circuit and what we can do is plot a VI characteristic of the Zener diode. The first conclusion that we draw with a Zener diode is that in forward bias it behaves pretty much identically to a general diode and in our previous video we discussed the VI characteristic of a diode looking like this. In this uh, characteristic we have what we call the activation voltage of 0.6 volts or thereabouts and we have little current flowing prior to that activation voltage uh, but the PN junction allows current to flow through the diode once that activation voltage has been reached and we find that it's the same in a Zener diode as well. Like I said before, if you haven't already watched our previous video on the PN junction and general diodes where we talk about topics such as the depletion region and doping and how diodes work, it's probably worth watching that which shows us how we come to find this curved characteristic shape of a diode and forward bias. But regardless, the characteristic is the same for a Zener diode as it is for a general diode. In reverse bias, things are different. And here we have a diagram of a circuit which shows a Zener diode in reverse bias. And what we can do is, like we did in our previous diagram, we can vary our DC voltage supply and plot a result of uh, currents flowing in our, my circuit here for a range of voltages. And that's going to give me a VI characteristic again. What we would find if this was a general diode is that current wouldn't be allowed to flow in this circuit. I could adjust this variable DC voltage as much as I liked, but really we wouldn't get uh, much of any current flowing through this diode. Eventually we would reach a point where the diode becomes damaged and then current would be allowed to flow, but that's only because we've increased the voltage to such a degree that the diode isn't able to resist the flow of current anymore, the diode is damaged and, uh, and current can flow. We call this an avalanche current. For a Zener diode though, things are slightly different and if we were to take a range of voltages and plot a VI characteristic in reverse bias, we would see something that looks like this. Here I've taken the same diagram as I had before which shows our forward bias characteristic, but I've added here the reverse bias characteristic and I've done that by plotting it in this negative quadrant of the graph. So what's going on in this particular example? Well what we see is that as we increase the voltage and bear in mind this is in a negative direction because it's reverse bias but we're increasing the voltage we still see no current and so this is pretty much the behavior we would expect from a general diode we have no current on the y-axis despite an increase in voltage. The difference occurs at this point here which we call the Zener voltage. Every Zener diode has a Zener voltage and the Zener voltage depends on the particular Zener diode that you're using. But the Zener voltage is a point at which all of a sudden the, the diode will be allowed to conduct and so current starts to flow. But what you'll notice is that the, the voltage never goes past the Zener voltage. So I can increase my supply voltage all I like. You know, uh, you'll notice on our previous diagram we had a variable voltage supply. I could continue to increase that supply but what we would not see is any increase in voltage across the, the diode. We'd instead just see an increase or decrease in current. And so the Zener diode has this very unique property. 
it allows the voltage to be regulated across the diode. And what that means is that the voltage is capped at a certain level. Let's say I had a 5 volt Zener diode. I could increase the supply voltage, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts, which would be the Zener voltage for that particular diode. If I was to increase the voltage beyond that, I turned my supply voltage up to 6, 7, 8 volts, I wouldn't see that reflected across the diode. The diode has essentially capped the voltage or limited the voltage at 5 volts. And so the Zener diode in reverse bias has this very useful property of being able to regulate voltage. Why might we want to use that? Well, in the bottom right hand corner here, there's some possible applications for Zener diodes, which are very popular in most electronic applications. We can use Zener diodes to provide us with a reference voltage, a standard voltage that's not going to alter or increase beyond the Zener voltage. We can use it for ro voltage regulation or circuit protection to limit the voltage that can be uh, put across the diode and across the rest of the circuit, protect the rest of the circuit from potentially high voltages. So we can use the Zener diode as a form of protection to limit the voltage. So hopefully from this video you've seen some of the key differences between general diodes and Zener diodes and also some of the useful applications of Zener diodes in electronic circuits. Thank you.